What's up guys, Sean the Bro here, and today we're going to be going over making quest progress. So basically making progress on objectives and being able to complete a quest if all our objectives are done. We are not going to be covering anything with like removing the objectives from this quest menu, this little uh, UI to display what's going on, or updating the UI. We can go over both of those in part three of quests, but... Yeah, we'll be able to slay this pumpkin golem or pick, you know, collect the pickup, for example, and have it update. In this specific case, we have to slay two pumpkin golem. And it probably should be golems, but, you know, I didn't make anything plural based on the amount yet. Alright. Here we go. We got our pumpkin golem, and we have to slay two of them. Now, I'm going to beat him up a little bit. He's got physics enabled for some things I'm testing, so that's why his, uh animation and his health bar are a little wonky right now but that's okay so look i've defeated him and now it says you need to perform this action one more times and that's what the log says at the bottom the yellow text the very last line you can see in the output log i can get my mouse for you right here and that log is something we'll cover later in this episode but that's showing us that we have slain a pumpkin golem and we're getting credit for it now we need to, if I hit him again because of the way we're not destroying this actor and we can just go ahead and, and call take damage on him again and I'll think he's dead, we can kind of cheat the system a bit and if we punch him again it should go to, we need to perform that action zero more times. So the game thinks we have killed two of them and thus the quest is complete. Again, we don't have any UI updates to like remove that objective or make the text green to say we've completed it or some sort of tracker next to it saying two out of two, but we know that our logic is working. The rest of that is really just to make it look nicer for the user and the player to know that, you know, that's their progress on it. So let's get into how we're going to do this today. Now, before we get started, this is obviously part two of the questing system within the action RPG tutorial series. So if you'd like to catch up on part one, I'll leave a link in this iCard right here in the top right corner of the video to the very first episode of the quest system. I will also go ahead and leave the entire playlist so you can catch up for the whole game if you want to see all the cool things we can do in this action RPG series. Now following episode one, we had our base quest, CPP base quest.h, and we spawned it in our base game mode BP where we were setting the number of objectives, setting the quest details, and setting up the objectives themselves. Now remember, this stuff will happen in a more formal way, probably in either a file that we parse, or some, uh, some sort of data table that we have in Unreal. But for now, this is fine. As long as we can get a quest working like this, then we can go ahead and extrapolate that and bring this to a more formal, easily accessible form. All right, so this is how we're setting up our quest. First things first, let's go back into the code. And we're gonna change quite a bit today. Not, not too much that it should be unreadable, but we're gonna add about four functions and I'm gonna use two of them today. I'll cover the other two in the next episode. I was just kind of planning and got ahead of myself. So specifically, go to your base quest.h, scroll down to where you have your functions, and I've added update quest. Notice these are all blueprint callable. Update quest, update objective, finish objective, and finish quest. Now, you can name these whatever you want and use them for whatever you want. Here is what my intentions were. Update objective, updates an objective's value. So, you know, if you have to slide two pumpkin golems, like in our case, then update objective is what determines how many, how many golems you have left to slay after you've already killed one. So I think that's pretty self-explanatory. It takes in an objective number and an update value. So objective number is important because if we have four objectives and we slay a pumpkin golem, but objective two is to collect so many pickups, well, we don't want objective two about collecting pickups to update when we slay a pumpkin golem. It doesn't make sense. So we can either pass it the actual objective structure by reference or just pass in the number. Since we have the number system, it's just easier to do that. I can't think of any reasons this would cause issues down the line as long as we're careful about keeping the objective number the same. And it's definitely a lot smaller than passing in an entire structure. 
then I have this update value, which is how much this value changes by. So the reason I've done this specifically is say you have like do 200 damage to different enemies. Well, I don't want to call update objective and one, you know, one point of damage gets changed every time I deal damage. If I did 200 damage in one attack, I should be able to pass it a value that updates and the function should determine how far along we are, how much progress we made. Now, update quest, we're not going to be filling out today, but in case you want to create it today, let me tell you the intention. Update quest was intended to be updating your description and perhaps even your title. So it could be if you have like a, you know, something that is hidden, a hidden objective that gets revealed, or if you reach a certain part in your quest and it updates because there's a change, you found out this guy that you thought was your friend is now the you know, your arch nemesis or something, you want to change the description really quickly, but it's the same quest. I've seen it done in games before, I went ahead and added it. It's mainly just there as additional functionality, and again, we won't be adding anything to it today, but we probably will use it in the next episode. Okay, then we have finish objective, which is pretty self-explanatory as well. It basically just means any of our objectives in the quest, such as slay two pumpkin golems, once our we reach the threshold during update objectives, so you know, once we reach two slain out of two needed, then we can go ahead and call finish objective. I still pass in the objective num just to make sure that I'm finishing the right objective. And we do do logic here today, but the important part is actually going to be next next episode on this, where we take the objective number and we go ahead and either remove it from the quest itself so that you know our information dictates what we want to do it shows that we are either completed the objective you know we have we can make the text green to show it's complete we can do whatever we want just an indicator for the player and also the finished objective will go ahead and see if all the other objectives are finished in a quest then we can call finish quest if they are all right and then finish quest is going to be basically the same thing in this case specifically it will dictate the flow of quest to quest you finish one quest that gives you the ability to go to another and it will you know clean up any of the objectives and or quest data on the screen that was left over we are not filling that one out today either but it is here and we will be using it in the next episode this episode is going to have a decent amount of code here and i'll cover what i consider pretty thoroughly first things first i actually want to add something to our setup objective and this is, I want to set up the method we talked about in episode one, where we can actually use the number that we're passing, the num required to show the text on screen for the objective. This makes it easier for us as the developer, designer, whatever you want to call it, to change the number around, make sure the text is always accurate with the num required, and also it can make it so that we can uh, use a bit more functionality within the actual objective itself, such as the counter that I talked about earlier. So what you need to do for this is go into your base quest.h again. And if you go to the F objective structure, then you can add objective ID and is complete. So we have this integer objective ID. So objective ID is essentially the objective number that we were passing around earlier. The reason I am storing it in the F objective is that if we're already on an, on an objective, so say we're parsing through our, our objectives in our quest. Sure, we can pass it, you know, an objective number of like two, and that's great. We can get that accurately because it'll be stored in an array in the order we store it, so that's perfectly fine. But we may need the objective ID. We may want to say, is this one, two, three, whatever, so that we can use it to either determine if that quest got completed or determine, you know, if you want to highlight one over the other, if you want to show progress from one over the other. So this is important. And then next, I've added a Boolean is complete because remember, once we finish an objective, it's going to check all the other objectives in a quest to see if they're complete to call finish quest. So adding this is just a little safeguard to say, yeah, this one's done already. 
Then, in terms of the setup objective function, it's mainly the same, but I've I use these T subclasses of instead of the specific enemy type, or excuse me, the specific uh, class type here, which I mentioned in the last episode and I showed off. But just bringing this up again, so T subclass of essentially means that as long as this class that we're, the item we're passing in is a subclass, which means it can either be the class type that it says on here, so a default enemy and a default item, or it can be a child of that, a subclass of that, and it will work. Now this is better than a pointer in this case because this means we don't have to specifically look for a pointer of a specific class. We can still use pointers of, of specific instances to create logic down the line, but being keeping it as general as possible here, using T subclass of is probably our best bet. More importantly, what I changed in this function for today's episode, I now have a description one and description two. I still have none required, but let me explain why I have description one and two. We were calling this setup objective in Blueprint and passing in the data. We pass in the enemy classes, the objective number within the array, the data, so the description, and then the number required. Now, if I have description one, description two, I can actually go ahead and just split the string like we talked about last time. Description one is basically what we need before the number required or some sort of automated data that we're gonna pull out from our objective info as opposed to hard code in text. And description two is just the rest of the text afterward. Now, if you have you know, some goal to have more than, than one task per objective, you can go ahead and add more num requireds to this. You can actually split it up so that you have a string that can be parsed with the correct number for me, the easiest thing is just to, I think most of my quests are going to be set up like this. So for me, the easiest thing is to have a description that starts. It basically defines what type of quest it's going to be, such as slay. And the description two determines what object, what enemy. So slay, collect, pumpkin golem, pick up, something like that. And then required is the number that will be added to the string. So once you've added these to your setup objective function, Go into your CPP setup objective function and make sure you add these again. You need to update your parameter list. Then once you've done that, all we need to do is actually set our objective ID that we created in the header file just a few minutes ago. And then we need to set up the new logic for the description. First things first, the way we are getting our data from our objective or setting our data from our objective is to get the objectives array. This is just a T array of F objective structures called objectives. And we take that and set our values based on the objective number. We're gonna do that for objective ID as well. We're going to grab objectives, objective num. So if the index is zero, then this is the first one, which is slide two pumpkin golems. Dot objective ID is equal to objective num. So it's literally just saying, yeah, the slay two pumpkin golems is um, objective zero in this quest. It's, or, you know, objective one if you're not using programming terms. But basically it's the first objective in this quest. Not necessarily important for here, but it will be important down the road. So I'm just going ahead and adding it now, and you'll see why soon. Lastly, we were setting the description here, just forcing it to be the description but now we need a little bit more logic. So I am calling description. This is what we had before. Dot append. Append is just to add more logic, or excuse me, add more characters to a string. So I take description one plus a space. So it's quote, space, quote in there, which just means it'll put, you know, my text. So it's slay, a space, and then I can just put in the num required as my next value so description dot append int for append integer that way you don't have to cast your int to a string or anything like that and put in none required and then lastly append one more time i start with a space so that you know if none required is two space and then the rest of the description and that'll make the objective look really nice okay and that's all the progress that we need for setup objective. The rest is going to be new logic that we're setting up for this episode. 
uh, specifically, we need to set up update objective and finish objective. These are the two functions we're going to be looking at. So update objective, make sure you write this out so that we can have our function in here. You know, you need at least this area for it to compile. Make sure you build and compile so that you know you don't have any issues going into this. Then when you're ready, we need to take our num required and change that value by our update value. So if we have two required and we're, we've slain one, then we need to change the num required to be one. Basically, take our objective number and make sure that it is less than objectives.num. Remember, if, it, if this was greater than or equal to objectives.num, it would be out of bounds of the array. It would be too high of a value. There's not enough stored in objectives. So if you do that, then you will crash when you try and access it because it literally cannot grab the value. So make sure that it is less than objectives.num. Then all we do is the same way we were doing it in setup objective here, where we're grabbing the array and then grabbing uh, the objective num index. But this time I'm doing dot num required and subtracting minus equals update value. Again, num required is two. Minus equals one means we are left with one on num required. You can uh, at, you can use negative values as well. So like if you wanted to, for some reason, add more that you had to do to that objective, you could just do minus equals and pass in a negative value for update value. This will still work. It'll just add a value. So if you add two, you did minus equals negative one, then you'd need three. Here's where I have my log. You can go ahead and add this if you want just to see that it is working. I can also add a log and finish objective here, which I will probably do. But this is just saying you need to perform that action, and I just made it generic, that action. Percent D, which is how you can print out an integer, which is what num required is, more times. So, you know, two, one, zero more times. So this is good. Let's go ahead and we'll actually add a log when we go to finish, when we add one to num finish, just to make sure it's working. Okay, so lastly, once we printed our log and we know that we've updated the value, what we need to do is make sure that this is not the last instance of this objective. So if the last thing we have to do, we have to slay one more pumpkin golem, and we slay that golem. If that's the case, we have to finish the objective at this point. We no longer need to update it. We don't need it to go to negative one, none required, and things like that. If you want to update it so that you know you have a counter on the side that shows their progress and you want them to be able to go over, by all means, you can do that and just wait for all the quests to say, yep, I've finished, and then go ahead and continue with that. It's personal preference, really. But if the num required is less than or equal to zero, we have finished our objective, so we're going to go ahead and call finish objective, and I'm just going to pass an objective num again. Okay, so finish objective. Now what we need to do is determine if the objective that we finished is a valid objective, if it's still in our array. If it is, we can mark it as is complete as true. Then we can loop through, you know, add to the amount of finished objectives and check if it is equal or if it is greater than or equal to the objectives array, the number of that, uh, the number of elements in that. That way we know that we've completed all the objectives in our quest and we can go ahead and call finish quest. The way this works. We check again, make sure objective num is less than objectives dot num. That way we know we're not going to crash. Then we grab our objectives array using the index that we passed in, objective num, and we set is complete to be true. At this point, we already know we have finished this objective, so we can just mark it as true. Then we're gonna loop through and see how many objectives are finished given the actual quest. So Nineteen num finish equals zero. I put it above the for loop. This is important. We don't want this in the header file. We want it to reset every time uh, finish objective gets called. We want to make sure that the number of finished objectives, the number of ones that are is complete equal to true, is equal is greater than or equal to the objectives array length. 
So I make this integer, set it to zero. Then I do a regular for loop, int, so int i equals zero, semicolon, i is less than objectives that none, semicolon, plus plus i. And for those that don't know how for loop works, because quite frankly, we haven't really covered it in code in this series yet. Basically, we're making another integer here, int i equals zero. So we're setting this variable i to be zero. Then i is less than objectives.num. So this is how long we're going to continue to loop for. So if objectives.num, if it has two elements in the array, then i is going to be zero to start. It'll be zero. And then it's going to increment once we finish the logic in these braces, in these brackets. And then I will be one. It is still less than objectives.num. If objectives.num is two, it's going to do the logic in the brackets again, in the braces again. We're going to increment again. It's going to be two. And then two is not less than two. So it's going to actually go out of the loop and then continue the logic. That's how that works. Now the logic inside the loop is basically we just check if objectives i, index i, is complete. If it is complete, then we're going to increment num finished. So basically, to complete the quest, we have to have a num finished of two or greater. Not really sure how you'd uh, reach greater without a bug or some sort of issue, but it's just a safety check. If you have more than the amount of objectives in the array, you still probably want to complete the quest. Not like you haven't completed enough conditions at this point. So if num finished is greater than or equal to objectives that num, go ahead and call finish quest. And this is something we'll cover in the next episode. All right, so there you go. This was pretty heavy on the code logic today, but there's only a few other things we have to do in Blueprint, so we're almost done. Make sure you build, build solution. And then once that's done, go into Unreal and compile. Now, a few changes I've made, and if you've been following the series, you may want to make. In the Pumpkin, Hulk, and a BP, I've gone ahead and disabled the setting the mesh to be invisible, or the entire character to be invisible once they have died. That way I can hit them again, and you can see what's going on, but you can also see that the log is printing every time. I don't want that to be confusing by punching the air, so I've gone ahead and disabled it for this episode. We'll have a proper death and destroy animation later on. I just don't want anyone to get confused over that now. I'm going to close out of this anim BP. And then the basically the last bit of logic that we need is to determine if we've accomplished the actual, you know, an element for this task. Sure, we have the way to know, yeah, we've updated this. We've gone ahead and killed an enemy. But right now that's not actually tied to any of objectives on our quest or anything like that few things we can do here. Uh, basically, we just want to finish up some logic in the base game mode BP, and the rest will be in the specific object that we want to gain progress for, for the objective. In this case, I'll work with the pumpkin golem, which is my base enemy BP. In your base game mode BP, I'm just going to kind of cover this again. The rest of the stuff is what you've already seen, but make sure you change the setup objective to match the new layout we have, where you have slay, the num required, and then pumpkin golem. And then same with this one or however many you have. Here's all my quest info that you guys have seen. And then you can see that I'm adding the description to the vertical box. Nothing really has changed here. I just wanted to go over it again so you could see the whole picture with the new setup objectives. Let's go to base enemy BP. And this was the last bit of logic we need. So base enemy BP, we need a way to determine if this guy has died, if he should track for our objective. Now, we don't necessarily want to do it on base enemy BP, we just want an enemy. So the class that we passed in, the subclass that we were looking for is a default enemy, which is good. It means we can use any child of that and it will work. But with that, we need to then create an event that we can use in Blueprint or just call and code at any point and use it to update our objective status. So if you go into the subclass class or the T subclass of class that we're using, in this case, default enemy, you can go to the .h file. 
and I've gone ahead and added a die function to him. It's not really important for this episode, but I'm just going to show you because I've done it. Basically, if their health goes, uh, if it's less than or equal to zero, I just call the die function, and I should just say is dead. If not is dead, the only reason I'm leaving out that statement is so that I can show you that I can defeat the pumpkin golem multiple times and get credit for it. Honestly, like I said, not, this isn't really important right now. The important part is that I have logic, this blueprint implementable event that I can put in any child of this class called notify death. What notify death does is it's going to tell the game or more specifically the enemy that is getting killed to update the game mode or update the character depending on where your quests are stored and say we have made progress toward this. The way I have it set up in code or in CPP is once we call the die function, I still do my regular die logic, but then I just pass this in or I just call this as a function from the die logic and I say notify death. So wherever your character is dying or whatever it is that you're trying to achieve, when you're picking up a collectible, when you're punching an enemy and dealing damage, whatever you want, it makes no difference. Just know that wherever you need to get progress on an objective, you should have a blueprint implementable event, or if you're doing everything in code, you should just have some sort of wrapper or function that you can call, static function perhaps, and add logic, add objective data. So I'm calling notify death here. One more time, make sure this is blueprint implementable event. If you make this blueprint callable, sure, you'll be able to call it, but we wanna trigger the functionality in blueprint. We wanna create that functionality in blueprint. Okay, and then build when you're ready, build solution. Go back into the editor. Make sure you hit compile again, just to be safe. Then go into the blueprint class of the uh, CPP class you were just in. For me, it's base enemy BP. You can see my class settings. My parent class is the default enemy, which is what I want. Now, we can go to the event graph, and we can actually uh, grab this event that we have in the blueprint implementable event section. So mine was called notify death. So just type in that. It'll come up with event. That's what you want. Then, the way we're going to do this next part, and this is the last part, is we're essentially going to grab the game mode. Unreal may have crashed. We shall see. It did not crash. Okay. We're essentially going to grab the game mode, and we're going to grab the current quest that the user is on. Now, for multiplayer, this can change a bit. We probably won't have the game modes, or excuse me, the quest in the game mode. We will have them attached to the character, or more accurately, the profile and progression. But for now, the game mode is just fine. So get game mode, literally right click and get game mode. And then drag off of this and cast it to the blueprint game mode where we set up all of our objective logic. Mine's base game mode BP. So here's our game mode. And now we need to grab our current quest reference from that. Current quest reference was set uh, after we spawned or after we constructed the base quest U object. We set the reference here in the first episode. So like I said, drag off of this current quest reference. Then from that, you can grab your array of objectives. And this has all the objectives we need to complete this quest. You can see I'm doing this right here. So the next thing we do is grab a for loop, drag off of this for each loop. And then I take the array element and I call break objective. I hit the little down arrow to expose everything, and then I can pass in the data that I need for this objective. I'm going to delete these now that you can see them above. So specifically, since we're in a base enemy BP, the important information here is to take the enemy class, the enemy to slay, and perform logic with that. So I do just that. This is a T subclass of the default enemy class reference. Okay, I drag off of this and I type equal equal and check if the classes are equal. So what I wanna do is check if this enemy that has died that is getting notified death called on them 
is that the same class type as the enemy type that we've set up for our quest? The way you can do that is type self. It will say get a reference to self. Yes, that is getting a reference to the base enemy BP. And then you can drag off of this and type get class. And this will return the class type. It's going to return a base enemy BP class reference. Well, base enemy BP is a child of a default enemy, so this will succeed. And since it will succeed, um, we can go and perform this logic. So take this equals sign, drag off, right branch, this one right here. And then only if this is true, do we want to do further logic. Otherwise, it's just a regular enemy that you defeated. It doesn't have anything to do with the quest. Just leave it alone. But if it's true, like I said, drag off and call update objective. Update objective is the function we wrote in base quest right here. So as long as that's blueprint callable, you'll be able to do that no problem. But you need to call it from the specific thing. So we have this current quest reference that we were using to grab our objectives. I brought it all the way down here. You can also just drag off of it here and call update objective right here. And that's this. And then we have to fill out its parameters. I need the objective number that should be updated, which is where the objective ID comes in. So off of your break objective from the for loop, drag objective ID into the objective number. And then the update value is how much you want to update by. In some cases, you can just hard code it like this. Notify death will call every time an enemy dies. So we might as well only update it by one. But you can also, you know, pass something into this if it's more useful to you, or just continue to hard code it and just be careful and realize how many times it gets called. Either way, it's not really a big deal. You just have to use it for the circumstances you need. And there you go. So at this point, we can, you know, walk around. Let me um, let me add a log to the finish quest real quick, just so you can see that this has been finished. This is getting called. What we can actually do is use objective num here as the variable we are printing to the log. And we can say, you have completed objective, and then say percent %d. And at this time, if we build and compile, once we finish our objective, it should print out and say we have completed the objective once we've, you know, actually finished it. So once we defeat the pumpkin golem and then punch him again while he's on the ground, we will get this, this log. And if we get this log, we know our objective and quest progression systems are working. Our build succeeded. So I'm going to go into Unreal and compile. And our compiler succeeded. So now we're gonna open the output log and we're gonna play the game. We're going to mercilessly beat this poor guy up. And this next hit will finish him off. You need to perform that action one more time. So that's to be expected. We're gonna punch him again. You need to perform the action zero more times and you have completed objective zero, which this is objective zero because it's the first one on the list and in an array and in an objective number in programming, it's going to start at zero. That's your first index. But there we go, guys. You can probably figure out how to do the collect two pickups on your own, but I will cover it in the next episode anyway, at the start, most likely. And then we will get into finishing objectives, um, or excuse me, finishing quests. And once we can finish a quest, we will go ahead and mark the objectives as you know, complete, we'll either change their text to be done, we'll add an encounter, however it works. But we'll make sure that it's obvious that the objectives have been completed to the player, and then we can go ahead and actually go to the next quest. So that was a lot of talking for today, guys, but I think we I think we really did a good job with this one. I'm very proud of it. So yeah, that's about all I got, guys. But if you enjoyed this video and it helps you make your quest system, please subscribe. It does more for the channel and for me than anything else you can do. It's completely free. I just really appreciate it. It lets me know that I'm doing a good job and, and 
just shows me that you guys are giving me support, which I really appreciate. If you had any issues with this episode or any of my tutorials, feel free to join the Discord. It's in the description. I can't link it with an iCard, but you should be able to find it. And once you join, we'll you know go over any of the bugs that you had or anything that you didn't understand and get that covered. I want to give a huge shout out to my YouTube membership and Patreon supporters. Thank you guys so much for taking the extra step to continue to support the series and, and giving more support than I could possibly imagine. Thank you guys so much for, for everything. Really appreciate it. Lastly, guys, if you want to come support us on Twitch or if you want to see programming live streams here on YouTube, then you can go ahead and check out the Sean the Bro 27 YouTube channel. I'll leave an iCard right here. And we do live programming streams on this channel, and they get archived to either the live stream section on this channel or the Sean the Bro 27 YouTube channel, which is where I have all my streams. All right, guys, that's all I got for today. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Sean the Bro, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, guys.